Hi everybody, Chris Lady here again. Uh, hopefully you've seen some of my Sonicware Live and XFM videos recently. Uh, I did a full tutorial uh, as my last video, which I'll link to above, which covers all the features step by step. The XFM is an FM based synth and groove box, that means we use uh, FM synthesis to create our sounds. Uh, it's as FM synths go, it's just about the easiest to edit that I can recommend uh, to you, but it also involves understanding how FM works. I will come back uh, to the editor section of the XFM in the future and explain FM synthesis step by step. Uh, but what if you just want to jump in and make some sounds and you're much more familiar with subtractive synthesis or virtual analog synthesis? Well, the XFM is good there too. In fact, we can more or less skip the idea of FM completely and think of our operators as oscillators, uh, create more complex waveforms with them and use filters and LFOs on the surface to edit our sounds. Uh, but first, let's have a look at some diagrams because I've got a whiteboard, so here we go. So let's consider this quick example of an analog synth setup, which is quite typical. There's obviously quite a lot of different ways that analog synths can be set up, but this isn't unusual. So we've got an oscillator section, which has got basic waveforms like square and saw. And then that's duplicated usually uh, across a few different oscillators that we can then send uh, through a mixer to a filter uh, through a VCA, which is how we control the volume of the output, uh, which goes to here. We can send usually maybe a pitch envelope into the oscillators, an LFO into the filter and um, oscillator as well for pitch. And then we've maybe got a filter envelope to control the filter and an amp envelope on the end to control the output. Uh, this is very typical, um, but the FM is slightly different. It's mixed up a little bit in a different order. So it's like this. So this is fairly simplified. There's a lot more going on here than I can show in a simple diagram. Uh, but this is basically how we can think of the XFM when we use it for subtractive synthesis. So there are four operators which we can think of as an oscillator each with basically a variable waveform. They start off as a sine, and as we tweak our knob to the left, we're gonna get square, saw over here, and then all the way up the top is gonna to be noise. So we've got four of those, they can all be different, so we can create four different waveforms on four different oscillators. Each has their own dedicated volume envelope, uh, which is hardwired to each of those. Uh, these can also interact with each other through FM synthesis, which we can kind of think of in terms of cross-modulation to use a, a more sort of analog friendly term. Um, there's a, one dedicated pitch envelope, which can be set up um, to create however much uh, pitch modulation we want within the envelope, and then we can switch on and off to each of the oscillators. Uh, these are sent through a mixer, so we can determine the level of each of those as uh, they go into the filter, which this time is on the end before the output. And we have a simple dedicated filter envelope uh, that we can control the cutoff filter with and an LFO which can be sent either to the filter or to the pitch. Now this section behind the dot dotted red line, that's the bit that we change in edit mode and this is the stuff we have access to on the pattern edit mode. This is sort of mostly monophonic. We get uh, one filter per track. So we've actually got a paraphonic voice set up here. So we can play uh, polyphonic notes uh, from the edit section with a single filter on a track in the pattern edit mode, uh, the exception being the LFO, which is monophonic to filter, but polyphonic to pitch. So let's start off by creating a quick super saw sound. Uh, in this section, if there's anything I go a, a bit too quickly, uh, please bear in mind that I cover everything in detail in the full tutorial and show you how to use each function separately. Uh, so I won't go over every single thing in detail. Uh, so we need to be in edit mode to change the waveforms. So hold function and press edit. Uh, select bank 32 because the chances are these will be empty and so will all these sounds. So pick that and it will play a default sine wave tone. So pop on our edit uh, overlay. Now uh, these are our mixer knobs essentially. These are going to be the, one, the knobs that control the level of each of the operators to the output or oscillators if you prefer. So they're all set to sign and the same uh, octave at the moment. So I'm just gonna turn that back up to 63. So to change our waveform, this is like having a variable wave shape. We're going to page two on the same knob. So sign in the middle, triangly kind of waves here, square there, sort of filtered saw here, about 50 nice saw wave, and then right at the top, 
is our noise. So I'm going to set them to 50. Uh, we can get a brighter saw wave above this, uh, but if we're playing really high up the keyboard, it's going to bring in aliasing because it's a little bit overmodulated. So I'm just going to set all of our um, operators to 50, which is going to make them all saw waves. And the moment we won't be able to hear them, so I need to turn them up. So I'll just go back to here. That's just one. So they're all um, set to the same pitch and waveform type, so they're all just going to be locked together. So all this is going to do is make it louder at the moment. So that'll just be a louder saw. So now we need to detune them from each other. So if we go into page two, all our detune knobs are here. So that's the for oscillator. One, two, three, and four. So if I start moving these around. There's our big trancey kind of uh, <laughs> saw, uh, super saw sound. Uh, so we need to alter the envelopes a little bit. Uh, because uh, we have access to the attack and release from the pattern edit, but that's actually only a multiplier. So if our release and attack times are set to zero and we multiply them, it's not going to make any difference. So the best thing to do is just add a bit of attack and release onto our sounds, and then we can tweak those a little bit from the front panel. So to do this, we've got to go into each one separately. So if we're in page two on oscillator one, we go to our attack time. So page two, attack time, now I'm going to tweak that up uh, to the middle, 63 again. Then we need to do that for each one. So this is oscillator 2, oscillator 3, oscillator 4. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the release times. So that's this button here. So we're in page 2, release time. Oscillator 4, oscillator 3, oscillator 2, and oscillator 1. which gets us that. So if we now save, press OK, just going to save it into there, I'm not going to bother naming it. Then if we take off our overlay, go into library mode and select bank32 sound1. There is our super source sound. Now from here we can change that attack that we talked about, so we can lower the attack, we can lower the release, so we've got a bit of access. to our envelopes from the pattern edit, which is quite useful. Let's just put it back to the original settings. And we also have access to tone here, which lowers that feedback. It actually brings it to the center. So if we were using square waves and we turn this down, it would bring them back to sign. So it's kind of like having an extra filter. Also, if we decide we like the tone that we've created by tweaking these knobs, we can use the capture function here too. Um, capture function is available from XLab and Library. So if we create a, a tone that has faster or slower attack or in a different tone, we can save that to an extra preset. That means once we've created some basic waveforms, we can tweak them about on the front panel and maybe not have to go back into edit mode. But let's add some uh, filter to this. So I think by default the filter switched off. So function and filter. Now let's just pick that low pass filter. This has a rise and fall shape envelope. So we can, we can tweak here. We can add a bit of depth and time. And then maybe drop it down an octave or two. So a quick tweak here and there, a few waveforms made up in edit mode and we're uh, straight into virtual analog territory. We can add a little bit of LFO. If we want to get it a bit more wonky. And we can route LFO to our filter. So let's go back into edit mode and we can create a, a copy of that sound and we can tweak it and change the waveforms. So function and edit, I'm gonna go into sound two, which is our uh, sine wave. I'm gonna copy this sound in. 
and press OK. And there's our super saw. If we were to quickly press OK, we can see we're, we're in slot number two, but we've copied the sound in from, sound, uh, from slot number one. So let's turn down uh, the three extra. We'll just leave ourselves with that saw. Let's bring that detune back to the middle. So as I said before, we can turn our um, feedback knob, which we can think of as a variable wave shape, down here. We've got square waves. Now the same again, if you were to turn this further, we get a brighter square, but up the top at the end of the keyboard, we're going to get some aliasing, so we'll probably stick to 50. So let's turn our attention back to those envelopes for a minute. Uh, in the XFM, they are eight stages, which is quite a complex envelope. It's great for X FM synthesis, but for subtractive synthesis, it's more common to have an ADSR envelope. Now we've already looked at the attack and release stages. Uh, we can lower our sustain level in page one. But if we turn the decay down, we're not going to quite get the response we expect because of the extra stage in between. So we're going to substitute decay time for S time. So go to page two. And that is essentially our D part of the ADSR. So we've got attack time, release time is the end, and sustain is the part that it's, it sets that in the middle. And then instead of decay time, we're going to use S time. So we get a, an ADSR envelope response uh, without having to go into all the settings. So when we're making patches, we don't necessarily want our oscillators all to be set to the same pitch. Accessing uh, octaves is fairly easy. So here, for example, let's turn up uh, the second oscillator, which is uh, still set to a saw from before. And we can adjust the ratio here on page one. 0 0.5 will be an octave below, 1 is the same as the key that we're playing, and then 2 is an octave above, and then we get to harmonics, so 4 is 2 octaves above. But if we want to access stuff that's a bit uh, less obvious, like intervals, we have to use an equation. Uh, but I don't expect you to have to work that out yourself, I've made a cheat sheet up here. So I've created a table here that goes all the way up to 4 octaves above uh, the played note. So, for example, if we wanted uh, our second oscillator to play this F instead to create an interval, we set, um, we look down the chart, so one matches the input note, so if we look to the F above, it should be set to 1.34. So we just need to turn the fine knob up. And there's our interval. So using this, we can create chords across our um, different oscillators. So I'll stick a link in the description to that sheet so you can download it and play around with it yourself. Now, another thing we can do with the XFM is we can create pulse waves and pulse wave modulation. Uh, this, this is done with the square wave. If we feed the square wave uh, with a saw that we can't hear, we're going to create different pulse widths. So to do that, I'm going to turn this fine knob back down to zero so that we're at one to one. I also need to change the detune back to zero because they need to be nicely pitched locked together. We're going to turn down uh, our slate two. So we just hear that saw. Now we need to root the saw into the square. We do this by making sure that the uh, the oscillator with the square on is selected and we select the uh, receive level from the saw. And as we turn the saw level up, it's going to change the pulse width of the first oscillator, all the way up to about a hundred is going to be a very thin width, down to zero is going to be our full square. So if we were to create uh, two different pulse widths, we can then use the XLFO to create pulse width modulation. So if we save this as it is into this sound, and then go back in, uh, let's go to number three, copy in number two, that's the same sound, that's okay. And then go one, two receive level. I'm gonna turn this up to about 95 actually, which seems to work quite well. And then save this into there. So 
from our pattern edit mode, if we switch into, actually let's clear this because that is, right, uh, switch into XFO, we need to select uh, both the bank 32s and our two sounds, which are TP2 and TP3, I think. And there's our portrait modulation. So we get a very uh, uh, authentic pulse width modulation using that effect. Uh, this is true of any two sounds that we create. If we create a sound and make something that's a tweak of it, we can use the morphing features to move between them. Uh, so effectively, all those variable wave shapes that we can create using the, the oscillators, they can all be moved, the envelope settings, everything. So that's just a quick example. There are loads more that can be done with morphing and subtractive style uh, XFM synthesis. So that about covers everything. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful and stay tuned for more of this kind of tutorial. I will be coming back to the XFM, like I said, to explain FM synthesis and a few other tips and tricks along the way. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.